Alright ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to be making a uh, gumbo and right now I'm just kind of showing you some of the prep work that's involved with uh, making this gumbo from scratch. Right now I have some sausages rendering down on a very very low heat. I put a little bit of oil to start them and then I'm just letting them render down trying to render the grease and the fats out of those sausages and I keep them on a low heat because I don't want it to burn because I'm going to take that I'm going to strain that grease and I'm going to use that as part of my roux because it's going to have those deep sausage flavors in there. It's going to help season up that roux in the overall pot. And here in the back, I got about five chicken thighs that I'm stewing down. But I'm using those to create the uh, stock that I'm going to use for my roux instead of just using water or pre bought stock. I got those chicken thighs in there with the... Uh, one onion, about three stalks of celery, and I put a spoon of garlic, then I put a spoon of that green lady chicken bouillon in there too to uh, give it some flavor, some shakes of red pepper flakes, and some black pepper. And you can also see in there that I have shrimp shells in there. I got some fresh uh, uh, South Georgia white shrimp, and I peeled and deveined them. And I got those shells in there too, just to add to that stock. Since we're going to have some seafood in there as well, it won't just be a chicken-based stock; it'll have a little seafood-based stock as well. So that's the beginning prep works that go with everything you have to do to make a gumbo from scratch. And when we come back, we'll have all this here stuff kind of put together, and we'll start actually uh, going over the ingredients I put in there overall, and then we'll start the cooking process. All right, so let's go to the ingredients that we're going to put into this gumbo today. We're going to, we got our granulated onion, garlic powder, black pepper, tomato paste, some sea salt, tarragon leaves, bay leaves, Hungarian paprika, Old Bay seasoning, gumbo filet powder, some crushed red pepper flakes. That's the seasonings I'm going to use. And then here's my flour and butter I'm going to use to make my roux. And then this is my emergency kit. It's some cornstarch and some kitchen bouquet. On the very back side of this dish, if my turn out that my, okay, my gumbo's a little, it's too watery. I'll add just a little bit of cornstarch to thicken it up. And if I didn't get quite the brown that I wanted out of the roux, I'll add just a little bit of that kitchen bouquet browning sauce to darken up that roux color. So, call it cheating, call it what you want, but that's my emergency kit. Now, the other ingredients that we're gonna have, I got my bowl of uh, red and yellow peppers, some green onion scallions down there. I got two white onions and two Vidalia sweet yellow onions, uh, three stalks of celery. Here's my uh, crab meat. This is the uh, select and the uh, claw meat. You can see I've already picked through it to make sure there weren't any shells in it. It's relatively shell free when you buy, but it doesn't hurt to go through it and just pick the shells out. It's nothing like chomping down on a nice hard crab shell when you're trying to enjoy some gumbo. Um, one other thing I did add to the stock that I forgot to mention. When I took this uh, crab meat, I squeezed it to get the liquid out of it. And I poured that liquid into the stock as well. So this has been squeezed out, so it's really dry at the moment. So when I put it in the gumbo, it'll absorb that flavor back into it instead of it being already wet and not absorbing as much. Those are the sausages that I rendered down in the pan. There's the chicken that I pulled off the bone. And there's some nice, uh, large, almost jumbo sized Georgia white shrimp fresh from, the, uh, fresh from South Georgia. So those are the ingredients I'm gonna put in the gumbo. When, when I come back, I will uh, have processed those vegetables and we'll be ready to start the roux. Alright folks, we're back. As you can see, I got the uh, sausages all rendered down, got the pan cleaned out, and now I'm going to uh, strain the oil. So that's all of the sausage drippings. It's been strained out. So now I got that nice flavorful oil without the uh, burnt particles. So I'm going to keep this in the pan and get on a low heat because I'm going to start my uh, roux in just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and get this oil warm. 
I don't want it hot, but I do want to get it warm. And in the back here, you can see that I still have my uh, stock going. I've taken the thighs out and I've deboned them, but um, I still got everything else in there. And I took all of the skin and the fat and the bones back out of the chicken and I put it back in the stock. And I even took those bones and broke them down so that marrow could seep out and help flavor up that stock. So it's going to be a nice rich stock. Um, not really sure how much it's going to be. Uh, you know, but if I need a little bit of more fluid, I can add water. But I will already be started with this nice, flavorful stock. So I think this uh, gumbo is gonna have a really good taste to it. All right, folks, welcome back. I am now starting my roux. This roux is a 50/50 mix of oil and flour. The flour is just all-purpose flour, nothing special about it. And as you know, the oil that I'm using there, I am using butter. Um. So this is one cup of oil, which was a half of that block of butter that you saw earlier, and um, one cup of flour. And I had the cup of flour kind of running over because I did have that uh, additional oil that I had from the bacon renderings. I'm sorry, the sausage rendering. So that is included in here as well. Now I got this fire on low because, uh, well, not low, low, but you know it's only on. 8 out of 10 but 8 is really not a high heat you can see right there that's not really really high um, again this is that uh, super giant burner that will go about 3 times as high as that one when you get it on the searing setting so I sort of showed you what that flame looked like I'm going to keep it about there or lower because I am using butter and butter does burn uh, quicker than oil does so I don't want that butter to burn I just want this roux to thicken up and uh, start to darken so as you can see you just gotta keep it moving and this process can take up to an hour depending on how much you do it how much heat you use so I'm not gonna have you watch a whole hour of me making this roux I'll just periodically take snapshots as the uh, color darkens so you can see the uh, consistency of the color as it goes through now one thing you can do if you're going to use the butter if you plan ahead you can go ahead and make yourself some clarified butter which has a much higher um, burning point because you have basically took all the impurities out the salts and everything else that they put in there you're taking all of that out and that butter is more close consistency to oil but I didn't have any clarified butter today so I'm not going to use it I'm just going to do it this way take it low and slow until I get the roux that I want um, additionally I got my okra over here I'm just gonna basically flash boil it I'm just gonna get it up to a boil let it roll for about two to three minutes and then I'm gonna take it off and let it strain and run some water on it and what that's gonna do that's gonna de-slime the okra some uh, I personally I'm a fan of the slime and most of my dishes I will just take that okra and put it right in the pot without de it. but my wife really doesn't like it so in order for me to get her to eat it, I'll deslime it. So I'm desliming it for her. And you can see I still got that uh, stock in the background just simmering down and absorbing those flavors from those bones and the marrow and the shells and everything else. So that ought to be really good when I put it in this gumbo. So here's what the roux is looking like now. You can see it's starting to get a little rumble in there. I'm going to keep it right like that all the way through. You can see it's relatively thickening up a little bit and that's what I want and you just can't stop the roux you can't stop it you gotta keep it going because it will scorch um, so here it is and I'll just take snapshots until I get it like I want and I'll tell you how long it took once I'm done All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. As you can see from my uh, pictures, those pictures were taken on just about every five minute intervals. So I'm 30 minutes into this roux now, and you can see I have a nice chocolate brown color. 
So it actually didn't take as long as I thought it would to get here. I am going to let it go for a little while longer, but I didn't want you to know that I have turned my heat down. Once I got to this 30 minute point, I cut my heat down in half because this is, once you get to this point, it gets a little more mission critical. It's easier to go from good to ruin. So I just slowed it down so that I could continue to get the color that I'm looking for. I'm looking for just a little darker color. I like my gumbos really, really deep chocolate brown. So that's what I'm looking for. Like I said, I turned down the fire because I didn't want it to burn because I don't want to have to start this 30 minute process over again. So in the end, I'm probably still going to go about 40, 45 minutes before I get that color that I'm looking for. I don't want a black roux, but I want a really, really deep brown roux. So this is what it's looking like. I just wanted to let you see what it looked like, you know, 30 minutes in, what that consistency looked like in the pan. As you can see, uh, I've been constantly moving this for the last 30 minutes, so it's a good workout for your arm as well. If you do this a lot, a lot, you can get a automatic roux stirrer and it'll go in the pan and just keep this thing moving for you. But I don't do it enough to uh, pay for that apparatus, so I'll just get the workout with my hand and sometimes I go up and down, left and right, and other times I go in circles. Just anything to keep it moving and keep me interested. So there you have it. I will still take pictures every five minutes or so until I get to the consistency color that I was looking for. So this was just a 30 minute update. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we are one hour in and I have gotten this roux right where I want it. Um, from the 30 minute mark down to the hour, I didn't gain a tremendous, tremendous amount of darkness as far as getting browner. But I do have that dark chocolate roux color that I wanted. And like I said, at the halfway point, I did turn the flames down because I did not want to ruin this thing. But I do have the brown that I was looking for. And like I, said, I could have stopped about 45 minutes, but I just decided to let this roux continue on as I got some of the other things together. So a couple things that I've done since in that last 15 minutes while I let that roux go, I went ahead and I strained off my okra. Like I said, I did uh, you know parboil it, flash boil for about two to three minutes and then I de-slimed it. I just sat it in the colander, that colander right there. Rinsed it off, let it drain. It drained out a bunch of that slimy stuff. And then I uh, rinsed it maybe two times and just let it continue to drain to get that snot out of there. And then I took the first round of stock and poured it on there so that I could start creating the second round. The second round is not going to be as uh, flavorful as the first, but it will be better than just putting straight water in the pot. And then the last thing I did, I just took that, and I took that little can of tomato paste that I had, and I went ahead and uh, mixed that tomato paste up inside of that seafood chicken stock with the okra. There's no flame on that. I just went ahead and mixed that up so that when it's time to add it to the pot, it's already mixed up and blended. So now... See, I'm still over here stirring this roux as we talk. Now, you know, do it at your own risk, multitasking like that, because, like I said, this roux can turn from good to ruin in a split second. So, you know, multitask at your own risk. There's no harm in just doing things one thing at a time, especially if you're inexperienced. So don't bite off more than you can chew, because you don't want to ruin this thing after you've been going for 45 minutes to an hour and have to start over. So now the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put my onions in. And I'm going to turn my heat up. Because I want these onions to uh, start to caramelize. Like I 
minutes and halfway through I turned my uh, heat down to four and now as soon as I put these onions back in I turned the heat back up to eight and that's about the max heat I'm gonna put on this pot so I'll just continue to uh, add ingredients until I get where I want to be one little onion didn't get cut up as much as I want it so I don't want these to get you know soft I just want them to get a little uh, translucent and you won't really be able to tell the caramelization because it's mixed into this dark chocolate roux but I just don't want them to be white I just want them to go ahead and cook down a little before I put the rest of the uh, ingredients in. Mmm. Smelling good. Smell like the thick French onion soup at the moment. You can see that heats up. So the roux is going to continue to get dark. So you got to keep it moving still. Just because you add the onions don't mean you're done. You still got to keep this thing moving so that you don't ruin it. hear that in there. You should be able to hear it. It smells as good as it sounds right now too. Alright, so now I got those kind of cooking down a little. It's time to add in the rest of the uh, vegetables. Um, one thing you can see in the top of there that I didn't talk about before I forgot to tell you that I did have a uh, sweet chili pepper that I added to that when I was telling you what the, all those ingredients were. I forgot to tell you about the sweet chili pepper. I have two of those in there. I like those. Um, they do have a little bit of heat, but they don't have enough to make it overpowering because we're not a very, we don't like a lot of heat in our food. Savory good. Spicy for no good reason, not good. So you can add hotter peppers if you want. You know, do do what works for you. This is just a basic recipe so you can see the ingredients that go into this. The best part about gumbo is gumbo basically means anything you got that you want to use. So whatever you want to put in here, you put in here. I got other things that I could add in here. I got some scallops, some uh, smoked baby uh, clams different types of seafood you can add to it. If I was going to do just a true seafood gumbo, I would put all that in there as well. But since I'm going to do the chicken, I'm going to lay off on some of that seafood so I can have a nice balance in the flavors. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, continue to render this down a little. And I'm going to transfer it into the uh, my stock pot. And then we'll pick up from there. So that's what we got going on now. We got the roux, the onions were in there for maybe three minutes or so. It's doing, uh, simmering down in that roux, kind of starting to cook to get translucent. And then I poured in the yellow and the red bell pepper with the celery, the green scallions, along with the uh, two chili peppers. And now I'm just turning them and keeping it moving. Oh, you can see that darkness in that roux. Just look how deep brown it is. Mm. I wish you could smell it. Oh my goodness, I wish you could smell it. So, like I said, I'll be back in just a little bit. We'll be in a different pot and adding the rest of the ingredients and starting this thing to simmer down and let it cook and let all those uh, flavors marinate into each other and make one nice pot of gumbo. Alright folks, here we go. You can see I have that uh, roux rendered down with my uh, vegetables in there now. That's just like I want it. You see that steam coming up off the pot. I have a 
kind of got the heat still up on that 8 setting even in this pot because we're not done yet we're just going to now take those sausages just get those blended in and I didn't have to put the sausages in right with the onions and stuff because they were already cooked they were already pre-rendered now so I don't have any grease or anything that will pull out of those and I need, didn't want to have to cook them to get them crisp because I already did that previously so that's that I'm also going to take this chicken again that ended up being four chicken thighs and that was one box of sausages one whole box of sausages you can uh, add or reduce the meat as you like but I'm a meatitarian so all my dishes will always have a lot of meat in them because I love that meat so we got all of that in there getting it mixed up good and again, I pull that chicken. I pulled it in uh, not big chunks, but not little fine pieces either, so you'd have some consistency when you bite it, just like you would have with the sausages. And I cut the sausage on a bias. It's a uh, culinary trick. It makes you think you got more than what you really have. It's still the same box of sausage, but when you cut it that way, that long way, it looks like it's more sausage than if you just cut it, uh, you know, straight across and make little circle pieces with it. So. This is my pan that I did the other stuff in. Um, see, nothing stuck to it. So, it was perfect heat. If you're ever cooking in your pan, you see it start to stick, stop immediately. Take it off the heat. Get you a fresh pan. Pour the ingredients off the top in the pan. Do not scrape it. And just uh, start from there. And just go to your next pan before you ruin it. If you catch it right when it starts, you won't uh, ruin everything in your pan and you can just leave that burnt stuff in the bottom of that pan do not scrape it it's not worth it just ruining the flavor of your whole pot to save a couple of ingredients so like I said that pan I didn't have anything sticking and again I'm still moving it around in this big uh, stock pot as well because I don't want it to stick before I put my liquids in there uh, I cook with a lot of stainless steel pans and they're not very forgiving so if you're not comfortable with them get you some non-stick pans by all means they work great and they are a little more forgiving <laughs> a lot more forgiving so that'll help with uh, scorching stuff and uh, getting it stuck to the pan and burnt and things like that so got all that mixture mixed in there now I'm gonna take my pan of fluids again that's the okra the stock and the tomato paste mm, mm, mm. man look at that look at that rich brownness in there oh yeah and again the chicken was cooked as well I kind of missed that part so I didn't have to saute the chicken with the onions and the vegetables either because the chicken was pre-cooked you can just uh, same way I render down that chicken you can render down I'm sorry the same way I render down those sausages you can render down that chicken the same way and use those drippings to uh, make that roux but I also wanted to use that chicken to uh, help create that stock that I was using now if you can see that consistency there that's really thick so cornstarch not going to be a problem here because that between the um, the flour and the roux and also the longer you cook the flour the less it's going to thicken up because you um so but when i add that tomato paste as well that's a very thick viscous substance too so you can see this here is a very uh kind of thick gumbo that's a little um, it's thicker than I want it, but like I said, I uh, took the other pot that I had before of liquids, drained it off, and then I made some more. So instead of having to add water, I just strain that, I just strain it. Now I'll turn that fire off now. I'll let that strain for a minute. 
and then that's the second pot of stock. It's not as strong as the first one, so at this point it may be more of a broth than a stock, but it's still better than just water. So, take that, put it back over, voila, second pot of stock. If you wanted to go a third time, if you needed it, you could, just remember every time you do it, it's going to get weaker. So I'll just pour in half of that. Oh yeah. That's right about the consistency that I want it. But I know I am going to let this here cook down for about another hour. And so since I'm going to let it cook now, I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of that stock. And make it a little looser, knowing that it's going to concentrate and render down some more. So... There we have that. I'm going to get the rest of the ingredients and we'll be right, right folks, I'm back. Now I have uh, just stopped to go get my other ingredients. I've turned this heat down uh, pretty low now. It's only about on number two. So it's half of the half setting I had before. Because at this point, all I need this pot to do is simmer down and let those flavors combine. Now, I am going to add my crab and my shrimp at this point. You know, some people will prefer to not add the uh, crab and shrimp now and add it at the very end. But I add mine now because I know that those ingredients have a certain flavor they're going to add to the pot. And I want everything in this pot to uh, mix up together and just have all a great flavor. Let it all just combine and taste the same. And, you know, some people say that, man, those shrimp are going to get, you know, they're going to get tough. Well, I'm going to have it on low heat, and they are going to cook. But when you think about it, even if you put it in there at the very end of the day, when you warm this pot up tomorrow, they're still going to cook. So, you know, do what works for you. I don't mind the consistency of the shrimp when they cook for a little longer in the gumbo. So I'm going to keep them in there, and I'm just going to do what I do. So... Next thing you're going to want to do is just taste it, but we'll give it, you know, two or three minutes to let the shrimp kind of get cooked, and we'll taste it, and we'll start seasoning it to taste, and then we'll walk away and let it simmer. So I'm going to let those shrimp cook now, let the crab, let all those flavors start to blend together, so we'll know what we're starting with and we'll know what to add to get where we want to be in the end. So we'll be back. Alright ladies and gentlemen, here's the uh, end result of the uh, gumbo. I got all of the uh, seasonings in. I didn't uh, want to bore you with uh, the seasonings that I put in there. Just watching me do that, but you can see there's one whole bay leaf. I use the whole bay leaves and then when you dish it up, when you get one on your plate, you just pull it out and put it to the side. Those bay leaves do have a great flavor when you put them in gumbo. Um, because I got everything in here is seasoned to my liking, to my taste. And I know the taste is going to intensify as it cooks. So I didn't over season it now, knowing that those flavors were going to intensify. When I get right to the time to serve, I can always just add a little bit of this, a little bit of that at the very end if I find something that I'm missing. But for now, it's good like it is. Let's see if I just taste it one last time. Mm. Perfect when you can taste all the different ingredients together. So, you see, this is the end result. It is uh, about an hour and a half since I started making that roux to get to this particular point right here. Add in, add in another hour or so of prep. So, you know, this isn't a quick fancy meal it's a very labor intensive type dish if you want to make everything from scratch and just try to do it from the beginning to the end there are some um, things you can do to shortcut your way through I didn't want to do that I wanted just a uh, 
nice original pot of gumbo. It's a cold, rainy day here in North Georgia. So I'm going to take this gumbo and ladle it over some rice later on in the day. And just sit back and listen to the rain and watch some TV with my girls. So, now, as far as the seasonings, um, my quantities... The filet powder, I probably use about a fourth of that jar. And then the bay leaves, I probably used about 10 whole leaves. You can see those were the small leaves. I used about 10 of those. The tarragon, I didn't use a lot of it. And I'm basically using the tarragon to complement the bay leaves in the gumbo filet. Um, you know, some people will put oregano and thyme and things like that in their gumbo too. I find when I use the uh, filet powder and the bay leaves, I don't need all those extras because they already have enough flavor in them that I don't need the other flavors. But the tarragon is a sweet, savory green that adds a nice balance to those uh, uh, the gumbo and the bay leaves, the filet powder and the bay leaves. And um, check your filet powder because some of them are actually cut with thyme. So if you're going to use thyme, make sure you account for the thyme that's in the uh, filet powder. I just used very little bit of the Old Bay and Hungarian paprika, I mean, maybe a tablespoon of each. The black pepper, yeah, I just shook that to taste. And with the red pepper flakes, I'm going to say I used twice as much red pepper flake as I did for the coarse ground black pepper. And then I put just a, uh, maybe a tablespoon of garlic in there. And then salt. I just salted it to taste. Again, I didn't put too much salt because I know those flavors are going to intensify. I did, in the beginning, I did have the onion, uh, green laden onion, but between the onion that I put in the stock and also the extra onions that I put by themselves as I sauteed them into the uh, roux, I didn't need any more onion flavor, so I just removed the onion from the menu. So, remember, cook everything to taste. What you like is not necessarily what I like, but these are just some basic, the basics of making the gumbo with a little bit of uh, labor involved. So when I uh, get to the end product and I laid it over some rice, I'll take a picture of it, let you see what the final result looked like. But this is uh, Papa Top 912, and this is my version of a uh, gumbo. And there you have it.